Welcome to the HIV Hour and today's guest, Sam Marshall, the skin guru. Sam is an educator, speaker, industry advisor and inclusion practitioner and is currently working with the George House Trust to create a guide for the beauty industry to help develop diversity, equity and inclusion for people living with HIV in the UK. So thank you very much for being with us, Sam. How are you today? Oh, I'm great. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Thank it you. is such an honour to speak to you. I've seen a lot of your work <laughs> on Instagram and know a bit about your background. But for those listening who don't know, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. So I, well, I'm a beauty therapist. Um, so that's the sector that I work within. And I'm also an educator. And I've managed to, by having a bit of a, a gob on me, uh, get on some advisory boards. So I sit on the British Beauty Council DEI committee and I'm an advisor for Habia, which is a hair and industry, hair and beauty industry authority who set the standards. So I help um, rewrite waxing standards predominantly. That's kind of one of my specialisms. Um, and also I kind of get to advise people on just how they can be a bit more inclusive generally. So that can obviously take many forms. You you mentioned there about diversity, equity and inclusion. Tell us a little bit more about what the three of those terms mean. Absolutely. Yeah. So diversity basically means difference. So we <laughs> diversity gets used in the wrong context text a lot of the time. People kind of think diverse is just adding a black person to a speaker lineup, but it really isn't. Um, so it's just having different, celebrating difference. Um, so a diverse workforce would be a workforce with different um, backgrounds, experiences, challenges, um, identities. And then equity is um, one of my favorite words. So equity used to be equality and equality was giving everyone the same. Um, so I do a shoe analogy on this. So e equality is making sure everyone's got a pair of shoes, but equity is giving them shoes that fit them. So that's kind of the easy way with equity. So it's adapting it to those person's needs. And then inclusion is basically welcoming everyone um and uh, and giving everyone a, i like to add the word belonging as well because i think that's really really important that everyone feels like they belong so definitely in the beauty sector i want everyone that walks through my clinic door to feel like they belong in my business um and i would love that to happen everywhere else so i, I do a lot of work um with gender inclusion as well and trans awareness because that's something that i see there's a, a, a huge need for um, and then of course the work around HIV awareness which is which is huge at the moment. Yeah so moving on to that so this specifically with HIV awareness what have you identified as problems within the beauty sector? So um, I as part of the LGBTQ plus community I have a lot of friends living with HIV um, and so I have a really good knowledge of it and I understand um that you really can't get it popping in for a, an eyebrow shape um <laughs> which is just ridiculous but what I noticed first of all it was on a consultation form for a really big brow company that came out probably about 10-15 years ago and it said have you got HIV or AIDS and I thought oh <laughs> interesting I don't think people I mean no one in the UK tends to um have you know AIDS and trot out for a little eyebrow shape and in, in the middle of feeling very very poorly um so I was like right okay why are we using both those words and also why have we got HIV on there so I phoned up the brand and I said hey why is this on your form and they said oh oh yeah you have to let the council know if you're gonna treat someone with HIV obviously I'm using that language because that's what they use um or someone else said you have to double glove and then someone else said oh beauty therapists can treat people with HIV but brow stylists can't so every time one of my friends went for training with this very big brow brand I said ask them when they talk about HIV, ask them why and get and tell me the answers. And they just kept coming back with all these different answers. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I phoned them up and I said, can I educate you on this? And they kind of were a bit, they, I don't think I was their favorite person for a while, um, but they took it on board and it's come off the form now, but I still see it on so many forms. And when I ask the reason why I get so many different answers and some of them just boggle my mind as to why people don't know about this so there's a huge gap and then also I've had friends that have been refused treatment 
Um, I've had a friend message me. He went for a massage with his partner and he said, Sam, this is on the form. Why is it on there? Now I feel really anxious through my massage. Should I tell them? Should I not tell them? So yeah, in a nutshell, that's what it is. Wow, that's incredible. And how recently are we talking? Um, being refused treatment probably... Um, maybe a couple of years ago, but it still happens all the time. So um, Georgia House Trust have done a survey. Um, we found out that 79% of people had been asked their status um, and 52% of respondents had been refused a treatment or service based on their status, which obviously, as we know, breaks the Equality Act. I'd like to say I'm surprised, but I'm honestly not. So a few years ago, I had a personal experience. Um, I considered getting a hair transplant in Turkey, which many people did. It was coming out of COVID and it was that time where we were locked down, but you could actually still go abroad for beauty treatments. So I looked into it, I investigated, decided that I was going to do, which was quite an undertaking. I obviously discussed it with my family and friends and made that kind of decision to do it found a salon in Turkey that my friend had used and recommended and approached them, had a consultation with them, booked a and paid a deposit for the treatment. It was only then did they ask for a medical questionnaire in which I disclosed that I was HIV positive. They then came back to me saying that they had to refuse the surgery because I was HIV stip. I was honestly, and this is where I'll talk about the impact, I was devastated because I think for me, living with HIV for seven or eight years now, I'd never felt or experienced a barrier, something that it had stopped or prevented me from doing until this. And obviously being rejected and turned away from something is never nice. But in that situation, that's exactly what was happening. And I I went back to them. I challenged them and said, you can't do this. They then actually came back to me to say, well, we can still offer you the treatment, but it will now cost twice as much because oh we need goodness. to get a specialist in to look after you. And I was like, why? I was like, I'm undetectable. If anything, I'm probably safer than anybody else coming into your surgery that doesn't know their status. And also what measures, what safety measures and, are you, and procedures are you not taking? Like, how safe am I going to feel coming in if you're if you're not doing it across the board? So it actually put me off doing it. But, I mean, this was a different scenario because, obviously, that was a Turkish company and they obviously, mm -hmm. they have different procedures to, to a UK company. So there was very little I could do with regards to complaining or escalating a complaint. If we bring this back to the UK, what do you advise people to do if they have experienced this type of stigma in a UK based business? Yeah, so um, it, charities like George House Trust will advocate for you. Um, so they will they will help advise on what you can do because obviously it is breaking the Equality Act because HIV is covered under disability. Um, please reach out to me because I am more than happy to phone up that salon and advise them on training, which is is something that I know we're going to talk about because there's some training coming out, which will also be free to everyone with a suggested charity donation, of course. Um, so they were the things, but also I would, I would, I would, I like people to ask why, because it really helps if they come back to me and say, they told me it was because, then that helps me work out where the gaps are in the knowledge. Because in the beauty industry, we get taught that we should follow universal hygiene precautions or universal standards for everybody, regardless of what they may or may not have. We we kind of, in colleges, they say, imagine someone has everything. Um, but also, there's a massive gap in knowledge about un U equals U and about undetectable status because people still don't get it. And I had a great analogy the other day. I can't remember who it was, but someone said, it's like having asthma. It's a lifelong condition. You have medication every day. You can't pass it to anyone. And you live a, a, a normal, in fact, you probably live a healthier, happier life with HIV, living with HIV than you do with asthma because asthma is a bit more debilitating. So if you think, if we start thinking of it like that, rather than 
how we saw it in the 80s and 90s and we need to reframe HIV as not being something that that should carry all this stigma that it does absolutely I often compare it to diabetes which yes, is that's the, a it's, great it's, one yeah because it's, it's it can be controlled and it's something that you just have to monitor but yeah that's I mean that's brilliant advice for people who have that kind of courage to to clap back and obviously speak up and and ask why but as you've discovered and as I felt in a lot of these circumstances, you just feel ashamed and you're kind of, you you have that initial rejection, which can come with shock or surprise because you you weren't expecting it. Um, but what you're saying is if they can and are able to challenge it and ask why, and if they can't, they've obviously got fantastic resources. You, and that's an incredibly kind offer to like obviously reach out. Absolutely. To but yeah, tell us a little bit more about the work you are doing with George House Trust and this training program that you've got coming up. Yeah, sure. So I am um, I am a member of George House Trust. Um, so I <laughs> approached them. It was actually, I think, when the question was on the consultation form, it was probably about 10 years ago. Because I said the other day, I was like, I've been banging this drum for 10 years. And I remember going to George House Trust going, hey, can I can I come and work with you? Can I do things? And they kind of like, I don't think they got my mission back then. So it was probably, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, I became a member. And then I started doing work with them. And they're just the most phenomenal team. And there's not many of them as well. So they work so hard. Um, and I said, I want a guide for the beauty industry. I want something that we can put out there that's black and white. You can't do this. You should do this. You can do this. And obviously, we need the education to back that up as well. Um, so we've now created um, an education um it's four modules. It's hopefully going to be an hour um, long as a live. We've got our first one tonight, which is a pilot, which is very exciting. Um, and then I also want to have it as an online thing, like a self-study, because I really want to get this training out to everyone in the industry. And that's not just beauty. It's hair and barbering as well. Because I, quick story, I went to learn cutthroat shaving once. I thought, I can do this. This looks quite fun. Um, so I went and there was a, quite an elderly gentleman teaching it. And he, his, I mean, in the hair and barbering world, they don't have as rigid consultation process as we do in the beauty world, even though they regularly cut people, not on purpose, obviously, but by accident, which I find there's a real mismatch there. That's another story. And, um, and he said in the consultation, I stand behind them. I put my hand on their shoulders and I say, sir, have you got HIV? And they will say no. And I will say, neither do I. And I literally sat there and went, are you kidding me? And, then, and they kind of, all the students just looked at me and I went, are you for real? That's what you're going to ask. And they were just like, and then I kind of tried to educate them. But even then it was a bit of a, they kind of were looking at me like, yeah, I don't think I believe you. And I was like, if someone knows their status, then you can't take HIV off them. For goodness sake, treat everyone the same, wear gloves, follow precautions. If you have a needle stick injury or you cut yourself, go to A&E. doesn't matter if it's 80-year-old Mrs. Smith or someone that's like promiscuous. It really doesn't matter. We should treat everyone the same. So yeah, it needs to go across all the sectors. But the training... um is going to be free to everyone with a suggested and obviously highly encouraged charity donation because I really think people should give back to a charity if we're giving them some free training. And then they'll get a shiny certificate that's going to be accredited by Habia, which is the Hair and Beauty Industry Authority. And hopefully then we can um, contribute towards ending new transmissions by, is it 2030? I think we're aiming for. That is that is our aim with Thomas Higgins just leading the thought there. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, that's that's brilliant to know. And obviously part of that is what you what you try to educate and inform is the use of language and the appropriate language. And obviously you posted a brilliant, I think it, it came from George House Trust, a kind of guide to to what appropriate language is, is used. So that's something you kind of want to encourage businesses to adopt as well, isn't it? Oh, hugely. I mean, if I see suffer from on one more consultation form, we're not suffering. We're not. We, we're just you know living with but even I mean what what as well I always say is it, the question around anything around HIV or AIDS which is just still really weird that that's on there is 
take it off your form. It doesn't need to be on your form. It doesn't make any difference. And what I do in the training is bust the myth. So people living with HIV heal at exactly the same rate as people who don't live with HIV. Um, medication does not affect the skin. <laughs> it does not affect pigment in tattooing. And if it does, it affects it in the same way that antidepressants, you know, loads of other medication does. So unless you're a pharmacist, you, we don't know. Because that, that's obviously the thing I get back. It's like, well, I need to know the medication. I'm like, well, ask them what medication they're on. Don't ask their HIV status. Different question. Um, so all these are kind of, and, and, and people thinking if they get a, a blood spot from waxing and they've cut their finger in the morning. And I'm like, do you come to work with a gaping wound? Don't we just cover it with a plaster and put some gloves on? Like we don't hold a gaping wound on top of a client's bleeding blood spot and hope our body vacuums it up. It's just really, it, it's really, it's like, um, it's passed down through the ages, like an urban myth yeah. that we're going to catch all these things from our clients. And there actually hasn't been a needle stick injury that um, has passed on HIV since 1999. So when you are approaching these businesses, how are you finding their reaction? Oh, when I challenge if they've got it on their form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so there was one actually, and I'll name them because they're amazing. The skincare company called DMK, and they had it on their form, and I used their products. And I went to them, and I, and I, I'm, I'm really kind. You know, I say, can I just educate you on this? It shouldn't be on that. And they booked a positive speaker, paid for the positive speaker, and put out training for their whole network, and took it off the form. Now that that's just leading by it, they're incredible i was so proud of them um but then other some other companies it can be it can be a slower burn i've i've been having challenges with electrologists because um a lot of electrologists have were trained kind of 30 or 40 years ago which is when we were all terrified of hiv weren't we um we had all those horrible adverts on telly and everything so it, it, that's kind of taking a bit more to get the education out there but they've actually asked me to speak at their annual conference in I think it's in May so hopefully by the end of that little chat <laughs> I'll have them all kind of all all, all educated and, and taken it off their forms that's brilliant I think the main message that you tried to to put across is that it is your status your status equals your business yes I came up with that I was so proud of that line and it is it's none of our business none of our business I've never disclosed if I'm living with HIV or not. It's irrelevant. You know what I mean? Completely irrelevant. Doesn't make a difference. We don't need to know. It's just so personal, isn't it? It is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But that. one thing actually that one of the positive speakers, Anita, who I'm actually with tonight, is she likes to tell people she's proud of her status and she's proud of the fact that she's, you know, happily living with HIV. But she said, I'm happy for people to know, but it's my job to tell them, not their job to ask. Amazing. That has been brilliant. Honestly, I've got so much out of that. You must get so much out of going into these businesses and helping. It's fantastic to hear of your progress. And where can people contact you if they want to get in touch? Yeah, so my Instagram handle is at Sam Marshall Beauty on Instagram. And then on Facebook, I've got Sam Marshall Education. So I'm quite easy to find. I'm on LinkedIn as well, Sam Marshall. Um, but if you any George House Trust beauty posts, I'll be tagged in it or things like that. So I'm quite easy to find. So please, you know, anyone that has listened to this and has experiences and and just please reach out. I'm more than happy to chat and help you. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.